first of all, congratulations to uh, to Nebraska on winning a, uh, a Big Ten championship. Uh, those are really hard to do, and and to be undefeated at this part uh, with uh, with so many new newer players is is really impressive with the season they've they've put together. Um, you know, we feel good about uh, the last match that we uh, we're coming off of with a, a really good Indiana team and and a team that can stretch out in a lot of ways and and be able to play uh, the way that we did. Um, you know, with uh, with with everybody in the lineup was uh, it's, uh, it's what we want to try to be is healthy and and, uh, and getting momentum at this time of year and um, uh, so that was that was good and we've got a uh, we've got a big week in front of us and uh, you, you know a great opportunity going into the last weekend of, of the season and playing a, uh, playing an elite Nebraska team and uh, last time. Uh, it was just it was an epic battle between two really good teams at at uh, at their place and uh, uh, another opportunity for for our team to to test ourselves uh, uh, against the best team in the country and then then turn around a few hours later or the next day uh, for for senior senior night against Iowa uh, before before we head into the selection show on Sunday. Kelly, just wanted, I guess, want to get your uh, your thoughts now that you've had a chance to kind of watch the, the tape of yesterday's match. You know, how do you think Anna helped you? How did she look in, um, you know, in her, in her first match back? And it, seemed, it sounded like her first maybe real action back in, in, in a little bit. I think it was 10 kills, two errors, and 12 attempts. Uh, so they didn't dig her. Uh, it's, I it, it mean, you know, picked up some blocks along the way, and yeah, I think we we went in the gym. We didn't really do uh, uh, too much with our team uh, on Saturday. It was kind of a uh, do what you need to do. Which in the gym, we brought everybody in there, stretched and <clears throat> moved around a little bit. But uh, I think she probably took about twenty swings, and you know, it's the equivalent of people our age that. That you know, before we go play a game of basketball, we do a couple arm circles, touch our knees, and say, "All right, we're good to go." She kind of looked like that, you know. Took a few swings and said, "All right, put me in, coach. I'm ready to go." Um, and uh, and looked 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 good. Um, she hasn't she hasn't practiced in, in in a few weeks, you know. But she felt ready to go. Uh, our medical staff. Felt like she was ready to go, and uh, asked our setters if she, they wanted her in or get a few few days of practice beforehand. And they looked at me like I was nuts. And uh, you know, I thought it was, a, it was a good match for her. We're a lot better with with Anna Smart in. <coughs> kind of a crap show today. Um, you have two matches left, so maybe you don't want to answer this just yet, especially knowing that you can really add to your resume. But where, what's your confidence level that you can host in the NCAA tournament at this point? And and does the committee take into account uh, missing, like absences of key players when they when they think about this stuff? Uh, I don't have any doubt that we'll host the the opening match or the opening weekend. Uh, whether it's uh, the regionals, uh, you know, I haven't looked at it close, but I would, I would say that we, um, I would say we should um, at today. Uh, you know, what what happens as you're going through the week? You know, they, they've got they've got opponents, and you know, RPI seems to be you know those little hundreds of a, and thousands of a point differences. Uh, you know, after a match is played, and you know you've got the little movements up and down of, of everybody. But you know, we've lost three matches all on the road. Uh, three of them, or two of them, we had match point, and uh, you know, it, it's uh, I think healthy. And um, uh, have we put a resume together that say that we're we should be top four? I would I would think that. 
course, I'm a little biased. Um, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I, it's not something we've really talked about uh, with our team in the past. I don't anticipate that being a, a thing, it, you know, uh, a rallying cry for our team. Hey, let's uh, let's be good this weekend so we can we can play our third and fourth matches of the NCAA tournament at home. That's uh, that's not usually something that uh, you want them waving the banner <laughs> about and you know I, I don't know how excited they would get on that you know especially when they hear us once you get to the tournament hey it's one match at a time and then all of a sudden you know that that kind of doesn't make much sense but do we have the resume that says that yeah and I think it's really I think it's also good for you know go and play matches where you're going to get seven eight thousand fans I, I think that's uh i i think we've earned it on resume and and uh following and attendance and tv and um you, you know the some of the matches we've lost we haven't been at full strength so you know i would think that um then we put we've won some some really good matches and I think we've lost two sets all year to teams outside the top 25 in the RPI. And so I, I think, um, I think when, you, when you look at all that, uh, I think you can make a really good argument um, for us to be a top four. Um, Kelly, obviously playing at home doesn't guarantee you anything in terms of you know, Nebraska or, or even, even Iowa, but I guess I'm wondering – you know, last week you kind of talked about going on the road and some of the challenges, you know, hearing people dangling keys in your ears and all these kind of annoying things that happen to teams when they're on the road. And I guess I'm wondering in what ways maybe you see this crowd, the, the crowd at the field house, maybe affecting matches and maybe being a kind of a, an annoyance to, to visiting teams. I think it's one of the best uh, – uh, environments and not just in volleyball but in sports uh, when and when the field house field house is so unique and uh some of you that have been around to watch the uh the basketball games that were played in there you know and how loud that would get you know and you, you didn't want to be right underneath the upper deck because you could have a a, a pepsi uh, that spilled up air in the upper deck, drop it on your head, and and um, you know, but it, it can get loud and it can get r really loud in there. Uh, I would think as a student athlete, it'd be fun to place to play a, as a visitor. I would just think. I mean, I think that's what college sports is all about. But it is, uh, it is, it's the the fans are knowledgeable. They're appreciable. They they get really excited about good plays, good rallies. Uh, very excitable when when we win those, but also appreciative of of the opponents when when they uh, when they make a good play. Uh, and then when you throw on top, you know the students that have been coming in here the past couple of years, it's it's made it really really special. Now I don't know how many students are planning on on staying here for Thanksgiving. Um, you know, hopefully we have a few of them that that want to get rowdy or or come back for for that match, but. I would expect it would be a a great uh, a great environment. I think they'll be treated to another fantastic match between uh, these two teams that year in year out seem to be putting together very highly entertaining matches. I'm sure this will again be one of the most uh, biggest rated matches on television. Again, it's the middle of, of Black Friday. You know, people seem to get their shopping done first thing in the morning. Go. And then uh, sit around and watch watch an epic match, and so I think uh, you know what what a great atmosphere, a great a great environment. Kelly, I wonder if, uh, given all that and what you've seen from other crowds in the field house in the past, can it go to another level? Is there another? You've oh. seen some pretty big ones, but is there something more you think can can yeah. uh, blow the roof off of the field house? Say, uh, it's. Fans get really excited for this matchup, as as they should, and I, I don't think it's just been the tradition and the history of the two and the and the two that have that have uh, consistently been up there the the top of the Big Ten, but just the uh, uh, it, it's always 
the players have always showed up. You know, it's uh, the the level of play has has always been been really high, and so yeah, it's uh, although the uh, a Big Ten title has been already decided. I don't think that's going to dampen the the excitement for this at all because the level of play is should be really really high and you have amazing athletes on both sides uh confident powerful highly skilled athletes on both sides the the entertainment value in itself is is going to be is really high so although i'm sure some badger fans feel like that maybe you know just like uh you know we're not the only fan base that is uh, that has probably felt like that the uh you can still get really up and excited and fired up because of uh, uh, what those two or three hours uh it's i don't think you're going to be able to find anything that's going to be more exciting on a on a middle of a friday afternoon than than nebraska wisconsin Kelly, you'll, you'll celebrate six seniors on Saturday. Can mm-hmm. you kind of talk about, I mean, obviously this group has done amazing things. Can you talk about this group and just how incredibly important they've been to this program? Yeah, I'd say, uh, I mean, w- we've got a lot of them that have been here for a variety of, of, of years. And, you know, first of all, I think it starts with our setters, uh, Izzy Ashburn and MJ Hamill. I think, I don't know if uh, they might be the two winningest players Certainly, uh, Izzy might be in, in program history. Uh, there, uh, you know, that's you know that's what you want out of your setters is the ability to to lead your team. And uh, you know, I think this also may be the the highest hitting percentage uh, that both of them have done. That they've been uh, captains for us for the last two years. Uh, they are the stir that just you know the straws that stir the drink. And let's try not to butcher that up. And um, uh, but they, uh, they've been great leaders and great representatives for our programs. Uh, I don't think they get the, the credit f- for leading this program like they, they should, but, uh, but I understand why, why not. Um, you know, Timmy Thomas, uh, the, you know, on, on the other end of the spectrum, she's been here for a few months, but it's been really important and she's meshed uh, really well with, with us and uh, is really important. I think she, this week uh, was her best best week of volleyball so far for us during, during the season. And uh, you have players like Josh and uh, Boyer who transferred in here and has been incredibly important for us, uh, whether she's been a starter for us or, or a sub coming off the bench and how she approaches everything on the court and off the court. And, you know, Sydney Reed has decided to use her fifth year somewhere else. And, uh, um, but she has been really important. Uh, yeah, I think I think she's the, been here the third longest on, on our team, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So, incredibly important player for us. And Gabby McKay is another player that is that has transferred in here and has fit in and uh, added to our depth in in a in a great way. Um, uh, who else am I missing? No, I'm missing somebody. This is going to come back and haunt me. So, what's that? Are you sure? All right, all right. If somebody's coming after me. I'm coming after you. It's, a, um, it's, it's been a great class, you know, and, and fortunately we've got a lot of people coming back. You know, we've got uh, – it, it, here's, here's a question. You know, I'm not expecting anybody to answer. You guys are the ones that are asking the questions. But I just presented something upstairs about Sarah Franklin. You know, should we be doing a player of the year campaign – for her, and my initial reaction was, Ugh, "Man, I, I just, I don't like that. I don't like it." But, but then, are we doing a disservice to our sport by not doing that? You know, other sports do that, and uh, you know, and the attention and the eyeballs and the discussion, the good discussion that comes from that, and and arguments within fan bases and medias and all those things. That's really good for the sport. And you know, I sit there and I'm thinking, well, if, if I'm an advocate for the sport, shouldn't I be saying yes for that if it's good? Let's have that dialogue. Let's bring it. But I don't recall that ever being a thing with our sport of, of pushing those things. Uh, it's a uh, – I don't know why I'm 
talking out loud right now uh, to, to you guys. I'm not expecting people to have an answer on that, but it's a, uh, I don't know, it's not something that's been a part of our sport, and maybe it, maybe it should. Kelly, yeah, Kelly, I guess I was uh, curious. You, I mean, this program has kind of been blessed where you, most of your players who've been here haven't been in this situation where they're, they're not playing for a Big Ten title or, you know, haven't already won one. And I guess I'm just wondering, does – is that something that, as a coaching staff, or even with some of the mindfulness stuff you guys do, that you address at all? Because it's sort of a new, a new thing for a lot of these these players. Yeah, well, I mean, we've we've prior to this year, we won four in a row, right? And so everybody that's been here is is uh, that's all they've known. Um, it's a. Uh, um, uh, my my own children were trying to process that. You know, the last time we did it, I think my they were like five and and eight, and uh, one of them's a teenager now, maybe five and ten. Um, I don't know. It's a uh, uh, it, one of the things that it we've changed our lineup quite a bit, and that the focus is been has had to be on us and getting right and figuring out how we need to play rather than the results and so as we're heading heading down the stretch here it's been a little bit more um let's be playing our best volleyball here at the end and that's that's where our focus appropriately needs to be and has been put on and I mean we haven't tried to we haven't addressed not winning it's not something that is owed to us uh, you got to go out and earn and Nebraska was able to go out and earn that uh, we were not uh, they were it's it's what is so fantastic about that championship is you got to be great for 10 weeks it's uh, nine or 10 weeks so you've got to play every single match and and uh, if you're not ready to go and you get beat then uh, the, it rewards a team uh, over a long period of time. And so we haven't really discussed it. It's, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, we were trying to play well against Indiana, although, you know, coming off back-to-back -back losses. And that was the focus was, was that, not trying to motivate them to, uh, you know, uh, because we didn't win a Big Ten title, somebody else won it. Now we've got to reframe it. It was just we've got to play better. And there's an opportunity today to play better. And so we're going to try to play better against Nebraska than what we did the, uh, at their place. Can I hear what your Sarah Franklin Player of the Year campaign would sound like? What the campaign would sound like? <clears throat> Well, it, the, from a social media standpoint, I mean, you'd have to have something that her sitting on some type of uh, chair like a king or queen would have, and you'd have to have a crown and, and special lighting and sound effects around it, I would think. Um, uh, you know, from a statistical standpoint, uh, an outside hitter that is having whatever, four, four and a half kills per set, um, that is hitting over 300 in this conference, uh, that is passing half the court for three rotations, um, that, that's pretty unique. It's a, uh, th those are things that I haven't seen too many people being able to put up those kinds of numbers. It's, it's just really rare. And, um, uh, you know, but you can also make an argument to the victor goes to spoils, right? And so you can certainly, and, and there's some other really, really elite players in, in the conference. But she's put together a special season. It's, uh, I, it's, it's, uh, I think she should be definitely up there for the discussion of not only Big Ten but National Player of the Year this type of season. I think she's, she's had match in and match out. That was a pretty well thought out uh, throw in thing there did you did you think of the social media plan yourself did somebody else give that to you <laughs> no I'm not taking over anybody's job but it <laughs> it seems to be uh uh what, what uh, the, uh, there's not a lot of <laughs> there's not a lot of new stuff being done right now on social media we'll put it that way that was not a hit at, at any of our people all right that was not a hit at, at any of us uh real question what makes it so difficult to defend Nebraska Uh, they are they are good at every element of the game you know they uh, 
Uh, they serve well. They're an aggressive serving team. They pass well. Probably the best passing team in the conference. They've got uh, – they can go to any one of their players like we feel like we can. They're comfortable. They've got a setter that doesn't flinch. Uh, defensively, they are really special. Um, they play within themselves. Uh, they're just really, really good. You know, most teams you can uh, – there's, there's things that they do really well. Uh, but there's weaknesses that you can really attack and exploit. Uh, this Nebraska team just uh, – they don't have weaknesses that you can exploit. Uh, and um, uh, they're just really, really sound and good and, uh, and, and confident. So.